Hi, my name's Saeed, or you may know me as the Ling Otter, or if you don't know me at all, which is probably the case, I just make videos on TikTok all about language and culture. But this time I wanted to make a YouTube video because there's this topic I really wanted to talk about that just wouldn't fit in a one minute TikTok video. Now what's the topic I want to talk about? Well, it's this concept of secret sounds within your own native language that you may not even be able to perceive yourself. Or in linguistic terms, I'm just going to be talking about phonemes and the allophones that are associated with them. If you don't know what phonemes or allophones are, I'll explain them later in the video, but I want to talk about why I wanted to do this topic in the first place. A while ago, I made this video on TikTok all about the Spanish letters B, D, and G, and how the pronunciation of these three letters changes depending on where they're placed within a word. So just to give you some more context to the situation, I'll show you the TikTok, but just keep in mind it's one of my first TikToks ever, actually one of my first pieces of content ever really. So just bear in mind that the quality is not going to be as good. In Spanish, you're probably pronouncing these letters wrong. The letter B, D, and G. Let me explain. Let's start with the letter D. If the letter D appears after a pause, the letter M, N, or L, then it is pronounced normally. A hard D sound. Some examples are decir, banda, espalda. However, if the letter D appears after any other letter, then it's not really pronounced like a D sound. It's actually pronounced like the V sound, which is the same sound found in the word the in English. Here are some examples. Dedo, espada, cada, codo. See how these Ds are pronounced smoothly like the V in English? We see this difference clearly in the word dedo. Because the first D is after a pause, we make the hard D sound. Since the second D occurs after a vowel, we pronounce it as a soft V sound. So we get the word dedo, not Dedo. Now let's look at the letter B, which does a very similar thing to the letter D. After a pause, the letter M or N, it keeps the hard B sound. For example, banda, samba. However, in all other places, it is pronounced like the soft V sound. Kind of like the V sound, but without using your teeth, only your lips. For example, bebe, caber, sabo. We can clearly see the difference between these two B sounds in the word bebe, where the first B sound is a hard B sound because it comes after nothing, while the second B sound is a soft V sound because it is after a vowel. So we get bebe, not bebe. Finally, let's look at the letter G. You probably get the gist now, but after a pause, M or N, it's pronounced like the hard G sound, like in the word ganar. However, everywhere else, the letter G is pronounced with a soft G sound, which doesn't really exist in English, but just think of it as a soft G sound. Examples for this are pagar, abogado, not pagar, abogado. Bogado. The change in the sound for the BDG is a linguistic concept called lenition, where sounds become weaker in certain positions of an utterance, which happens a lot in a lot of languages. Okay, bye. Now, I got a lot of positive comments from the video, but I also got a ton of comments like this. This is just false. You're making up rules now. There aren't two sounds for those letters. It's just they weigh their sound flow naturally in those words. All the Ds sound the same. Don't let this Yankee otter fool you. You're so extremely wrong, it's crazy. Where are you getting your sources from? And don't say Spanish dictionary because you not see the differences in phonology from any dictionary. Don't trust him. It's the same D sound. We only have one D pronunciation. This is fake. Do not follow this advice. This person's deliria is absurd. So what's going on here? Why are natives Spanish speakers claiming that I'm wrong in spreading misinformation. Well, this response actually is really interesting and it can tell us something about the study of phonology. I would give my own definition of what phonology is, but I think Google does a good job of it. The definition they have of a phoneme is any of the perceptually distinct units of sound in a specified language that distinguish one word from another. This distinguishing one word from another is crucial to what a phoneme is. Let me give you an example. Here are the words pat and bat. The only difference between these two sounds are the P sound and the B sound. This tells us that these two sounds are crucial to differentiating words so we can conclude that P and B are phonemes within the English language. Now that we're familiar with phonemes, let me explain what allophones are. According to Google, allophones are any of the various phonetic realizations of a phoneme in a language, which do not contribute to distinctions of meaning. So, these are different variations of sound that a phoneme can make, but it's a difference that is not important for distinguishing words. Here are words that show the different allophones that the T phoneme can take in English. Top, stop, utter. If your language doesn't use these three T sounds to distinguish words, then you probably just heard the standard T sound in all of them. But all of these words actually have different T sounds if we look closely. The T sound in top is aspirated which means an extra puff of air is being let out when we say it. Meanwhile, the T in stop is unaspirated and does not have this extra puff of air. We can test this out by holding out our hand in front of our mouth and saying the words top and stop and feeling for this puff of air. But because these variations of the T phony aren't important for distinguishing words in English, these two different sounds are not considered to be two different phonemes. They're considered to be two allophones of the same T phoneme. Now, there are actually some languages that distinguish between consonants with aspiration and without aspiration. For example, a language that does this is Hindi. So in Hindi, these two different sounds would be considered two separate phonemes because they are crucial to distinguishing words within that language. Okay, now moving on to the word butter. Here we actually have the T phoneme being realized as a tap R, exactly the same sound found in Spanish, like in the words caro, pero, and oro. But in English, this tap R only surfaces when the T phoneme is surrounded by vowels. This tap R doesn't help distinguish words from one another, so we can confidently say that the tap R is simply just an allophone or a variation of the T phoneme. As you might be aware already, Spanish does consider these two
these two sounds as separate phonemes since they're crucial to differentiating words. For example, in Spanish, the words pato and paro can only be distinguished by the change in the T and the R phonemes. But in English, these would just be two variations of the same sound. Alright, I can finally come back to what I've been meaning to talk about, which was this text talk and all the confusion that arose in the comment section. What I was teaching in this video weren't the phonemes within the Spanish language, but the allophones of these phonemes. So, Spanish speakers had a hard time differentiating between the sounds because they just don't really matter for distinguishing words within Spanish. This difference only really matters for people learning the Spanish language who want to perfect their Spanish pronunciation to an extreme level, as these allophones are one reason why second language learners have a slight accent. If you've watched up to this point and still don't believe that there's a change in sound, let me show you some concrete visual proof that the two D sounds in dedo are different. I will be using a program called Pratt. It's a program used by linguists to analyze the phonetics of various languages. First, let's look at the waveform and the spectrogram for the word don't in English. Don't. We can clearly see that the vowel abruptly starts, which is indicative of a stop consonant coming before it. This abrupt start makes sense because the D phoneme is a stop consonant, and a stop consonant is a consonant where you block air for a short amount of time and release it all at once, like in the phonemes k, t, g, and we can clearly see this within the waveforms. Now let's look at the English word the. The. Here we can see that there's no abrupt beginning of a vowel. There is a smooth transition between the consonant and the vowel. This tells us that this is in fact not a stop consonant, but something else. In this case, it's the phoneme the, which makes sense because this sound is a fricative which is a consonant made by the friction of breath in a narrow opening, producing a turbulent airflow. This allows for the smooth transition of the and the vowel because there's no blocking of air. If this was a D sound, then we would be seeing this abrupt start of the vowel, but we're not seeing that. Okay, now that we know how the D and the sounds are supposed to look like, let's take a look at the Spanish word dedo. Dedo. Before anything, we can already tell that there's a difference between the first D and the second D. The second D seems to have much more noise associated with it, while the initial D seems to just have this line at the bottom. The noise associated with the second D tells us that this is going to be a fricative consonant, so already we know that it can't be a D sound since D is a stop consonant. This is why linguists note that it's not a D sound, but a the sound. Doing a comparison between the second D and the word dedo with the English word the, we can see that the English the is much darker in color, indicating that it's stronger compared to the Spanish the, which seems to be softer. This is the reason why if if you look up information about Spanish phonology, you will see that rather than labeling the Spanish sound as simply just the, you will see that they add this down tack to the bottom of it. This symbol indicates that the phoneme is pronounced slightly lower in relation to its original position. Applying this to the the sound, it tells us that the tongue is pulled a bit back from the teeth, but still touching, which completely aligns with what we see in the spectrogram, with the Spanish the being lighter than this English the. From this video, I'm really hoping that you learned something about phonemes and allophones and how allophones are one of the main reasons why people aren't able to perceive the differences between two sounds in their own language. But this also explains why in other languages we may have a hard time differentiating between two sounds even though it's so easy for native speakers to do so. And this is all due to the differences between phonemes and allophones.